I'm here in Australia with a young pastor who is planting a church in, most of us would say Melbourne, but they say Melbourne. Uh, this is Pastor Roy, and tell me, how long have you been working in Melbourne? Yeah, so I first came here in 2005 as a Bible worker and uh, stayed here for two years and uh, ended up needing to finish my studies. And so went back to the U.S., finished my studies, and uh, came here in 2012 with my family and uh, been here ever since. Now, I said you're planting a church, but what does it mean? What, what, do, what are you actually doing? Yep, so uh, we run a church service on a Sabbath morning um, from the heart of the city of Melbourne. Um, our church is located on 500 Collins Street. Um, and then during the week, we run small groups and uh, different outreach programs to the community. Tell me a little bit about the city. Yeah, um, Melbourne is kind of a unique place where uh, people would call it very secular. And so, uh, for example, we have holidays uh, for sporting events. Uh, we've got the Melbourne Cup. It's a horse race. Um, nobody goes to work when the horse races take place. Uh, I've never lived in a place where that takes place. Um, we also have holiday for the uh, for the footy championship. So that takes place uh, right near the city as well. And nobody, for those who don't speak Australian, footy is what? Yep. So it's uh, Australian football. Australian Good Aussie call. rules. See, I'm, yeah. I'm getting exactly. too used to Australia here. <laughs> so is that what they call Aussie rules as well? Or is yeah. that different? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Now... I understand that it's also a very international city. Do you have a lot of people from different parts of the world? Is that true? Uh, absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's a bit of a hub. It's a very diverse city. You've got 40% of people that probably come from Asia alone. Um, and uh, there's just tremendous diversity in the city. Now, which is larger, Sydney or Melbourne? I hear there's a bit of a rivalry as to which is the biggest. So. <laughs> Are there, you willing to go on record? <laughs> there, is a bit of a, there is a bit of a rivalry. Um, yeah, Melbourne is smaller at the moment, and uh, what they're projecting is within the next five years that Melbourne would become uh, a little bit bigger than, than Sydney in terms of population. Okay. Now, why? I mean, you were a Bible worker, and now you're working as a church planter. What inspires you to do what you do? Um, I think that there are moments where you realize God wants you to do something, um, and, and there were experiences that I had as a Bible worker here in Melbourne where I really felt like... Um, there was, there were moments where people connected with Christ in a meaningful way, and I think there's a lot of motivation saying, "Hey, that was great. I want to do more of that." And so, ended up going into ministry afterwards. Wonderful. Now, your wife is also working with you, so it's a family affair here. Now, when you're talking about reaching a city, you know, you talked about small groups and things like that. Um, how do you really connect with people? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, we probably connect with the uh, people who are Australian-born from two different um, two different methods. One is mainly referral, so that just means friends of friends. They come to church, they realize this is going to be a great opportunity to witness to my friends, my family members, and so the majority of the people that come into our church are referral. And then we also use social media, so websites like Facebook or uh, Meetup.com. Um, they're great ways of connecting with the community. And so we run different Bible study groups. Um, one of them are, is located right in the middle of the city. Um, we run it during lunchtime. So uh, the advertisement is if you're a corporate person working or living in the city, um, we've got a short Bible study in the, um, in the middle of a Wednesday and they can come. Okay, now a lot of people know what referrals are. Social media is, you know, it's been around a while, but people are figuring out know, how do we use it for ministry? You specifically mentioned one which is meetup.com. Some people may not know what that is. You want to just tell them Absolutely. how you use it? I mean, it's, it's something that's just out there. It's like Facebook, it's out there. You, but maybe explain a little bit about what you're doing, yeah. how you're using it. So meetup.com, I think, is the biggest um, networking website um, where people who want to organize groups can connect with individuals who are interested in specific activities or um, yeah, different social events. And so they go to the website, they can sign up, and based off of the areas of interest that they um, select, the website will automatically introduce your group to individuals. And so as someone who's running a Bible study group, I don't have to chase after people on the street asking them, hey, do you want to learn about Jesus? The website will bring people who want to learn about Jesus to my group. So you put out something, say, we're having a Bible study meetup group show up this time and people come? Yeah. Uh, so. Um, we, we put a fair bit of time in how we wanted to word our group. Um, but yeah, so we put out an advertisement. Uh, we said there's free food, we'll feed you at lunchtime. 
and the Bible study is going to be short. And so if you want to learn about the Bible, then here are different topics that we're covering. And so um, we've covered topics like Proverbs, giving you wisdom during the work week. And uh, we've had a number of people come in through that. Physical food and spiritual food, really. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Now, do you have any stories you can share about maybe somebody who's connected through one of these groups? or? Yeah, so uh, there's this one instance where we were able to bridge social media and our friendships together. Um, I found out a couple weeks ago our neighbors uh, have been reading our blogs on Facebook. And um, while we were at the museum the other week, they had mentioned, hey, we've been reading what you've been posting and we really feel like we can connect with you spiritually. Um, can we come to your church? And I was taken aback because these are individuals who are unchurched, they don't attend church regularly, and yet because they know us, they read the different things that we post on Facebook. And it's been an incredible way to have a voice to share spiritual things in a way that we normally couldn't do. Uh, what's even more amazing to me is that we've been wanting to start this um, outreach in the city called Jimbaru. It's where children develop um, physical skills, mental and social skills, and um, we just we're sharing that idea with our neighbors and they were saying, we want to fund this ministry for you. And uh, that was quite an amazing thing, um, especially because these are not Adventist individuals. They just connected with us, care about us, and felt that there was a need in the community as well. And you know, when you're mingling with people, when you are interacting in a, in a, in a real way with people, not, not with an agenda, that's probably the most powerful way to witness when your life is your witness and the Holy Spirit is working. You know, Pastor Roy, it's been wonderful talking with you. I would love to get down and uh, come to Melbourne someday and see what you're doing. Please come visit. Um, but thank you again for being with us.